Hey guys, welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about environment, psychology, and other interesting things. And today we're talking about deep ecology, which is a thing that we discussed a lot in my eco-psychology program, and something that I feel like is sort of like intuitively in the hearts and minds of many of us, but a really interesting kind of tract for a philosophical journey for those of you who are just getting started with green psychology and environmental psychology topics. Green psychology, the term was coined by Arne Nass around the 1970s when he wrote a paper, kind of venerating his ecology contemporaries, but also just making a distinction between deep ecology and shallow ecology, which is more conventional modern day, um, typical research ecology. Um, this movement is really near and dear to my heart, although there are a lot of fairly worthy criticisms of the movement. When I was taught about deep ecology, I was actually taught that it was kind of like militant and excessive. Um, but I also think that we need movements like that to be a counterculture to the status quo. And the status quo is a very human-centric, human supremacist sort of ideology that places humankind above everyone else on the food chain. One of the saddest things about being a human being is the fact that everywhere we live, almost every place that we settle, we disrupt the ecosystems around us. And I have spent many years of my life trying to cope with the guilt that comes with that. It's a very existentially dreadful way to live, to be hyper-conscious of this. Greta Thunberg is a public figure in modern times that I kind of think about a lot when it comes to very transparent stories of environmental stress and mental health that is impacted by the environment. When I was in school for green psychology, it was actually considered kind of insane to attribute mental health stress to environmental problems. I think that's changed in the last 10 years and we're kind of at a precipice of people realizing like, hey, this is real. Eco-psychology is important. Deep ecology is important. Green psychology matters. Ecotherapy matters. And people losing their minds and losing their SHIT over climate collapse, they're not just making that up. I'm one of those people, Greta Thunberg was one of those people, she developed an eating disorder as a result of her awareness of climate collapse. I developed a kind of depression anxiety in my early 20s when I started to become more cognizant of the scale of environmental destruction our planet is facing. It can feel really overwhelming and it can feel a lot like you don't have any hope or any chance of change. So in that paradigm, we have these really beautiful ideologies that are birthed out of it. We have things like green anarchism, we have things like deep ecology that are, I think, a very radical answer to a very extreme problem. I feel like I'm not doing deep ecology justice in this video and I want to be really clear that I am a proponent of deep ecology. I am just the kind of person that likes to point out where the flaws are, just kind of preemptively, because I think that that's how we grow and that's how we fortify these movements. Deep ecology should be a common thing, but the way I was taught it, about it was that people like, most deep ecologists might reject modernity, might reject urban lifestyles, might reject anything and everything that might harm other living things. One of the other very, relevant critiques of deep ecology, I think, is the concern around misanthropy, which is the process of sort of hating yourself and other people because we're human. Misanthropy is something that I have struggled with in the past, that I feel like I've gotten a lot of clarity and like healing around. And I've actually found that in the leftist community because it helped me to sort of grasp that not all human beings are equally responsible for what is happening and so we should not all equally shoulder that emotional or otherwise any burdens with respect to it. Um, I think people who are most responsible for environmental destruction at scale, they're actually the ones who feel the least about it and 
I think they've outsourced <laughs> the compassion and the pain and the suffering around that to smaller people who feel it harder, who are disempowered to act. That's kind of a radical thing that I just said. So if it upset you, don't worry about it. Like, you know, we're all entitled to our opinions. But I do personally believe that part of the process of not becoming a misanthrope, if you are an environmentalist or you are a deep ecologist, is recognizing that we do not all have equal responsibility because we do not all have equal power in society or influence. Some people might find that disempowering, but I only say that within the context of feeling environmental guilt or feeling misanthropy. That it is not your fault if you were born into a world that felt like it was burning the day you were born. Most people when we're born into this world, not most, everybody born into this world has lots of chemicals in their umbilical cord before they're even born. These are not the fault of the people living in society today. In fact, from a green psychology, eco-psychology perspective, and I'm a little less friendly to this notion, but some people will say that there is no one to blame, that it's all just kind of amorphous and we should live with more compassion for everybody with respect to what is happening. But the fact of the matter is human impact does negatively screw up ecosystems. One of the best ways to repair our planet is to actually remove ourselves from about 50% of the landmass and the oceans and allow them to heal without our disruption. Obviously that would be bad for the economy, <laughs> as if that mattered, <laughs> in context of a crumbling planet and a crumbling biosphere that the economy needs in order to function. Um, but I laugh about it because that's actually the main obstruction people use in order to not act on these things. So I don't want to get overly political in this video. I think I'm going to kind of start to reel it back and cut it a little bit short. But the long of the short of how to live as a deep ecologist, if you're interested in this, is to begin studying ecology, begin studying and caring about your environment, working with conservationists, working with ecologists to help your environments, help your ecosystems. And the depth of it is to really think of yourself as an organism. Think of your home, your neighborhood, everywhere you live as your ecosystem. And really audit that. And most of us, we are living in vastly degraded ecosystems. If you live in a city, if you live in a suburb, you live in a degraded ecosystem. And there are small things like guerrilla gardening or planting native plants in your backyard that you can start to do to repair the degraded ecosystem that you were born into. To me, that's a very basic definition of deep ecology that is accessible to most people. Like many niche clubs of extremists who exist in order to address massive global problems, I think there probably is a little bit of possibly like holier than thou or um, what is it when you you can't sit with us because you're not deep enough. There, there might be a bit of that. I've actually never met anybody who is like identified as a deep ecologist extremely. So I don't know if the rumors that I've heard that deep ecologists are particularly judgmental or gatekeepy are true. I do know that that's pretty typical of a lot of political movements, and it is typical of reactionary movements. When there is a big global problem and someone comes up with a radical solution, I think there's a little bit of like an argument over whether or not the people trying to participate in that solution are radical enough. My philosophy on this is I want this stuff to be accessible to people. I want radical ideologies like green anarchism, like deep ecology, like eco-psychology, eco-therapy, green psychology to become more ubiquitous in society so that we can more effectively address climate collapse. So I think that's about it for this video. I want to do a little bit more of deeper dives into this and I think it'd be really fun to have like a study group with other people interested in deep ecology. Um, but mostly I just wanted to help to find this today for people who are interested in learning more about it and to kind of promote this notion in society. This idea that human life is not more important than animal life and that animal and human biospheric health and ecologic health is central and foundational in terms of importance where everything else should kind of follow by the wayside. If we live in a healthy ecosystem, 
we can build a better world from there. I don't think that things like the economy or aesthetic or even the comfort to some extent should take higher precedence over the very foundations of life itself on a planet that has so much vivacious life and we've never found another planet like this in the universe to our knowledge. Fun thing about this um, little comment I made too is like we have reports of the government like admitting to aliens maybe so who knows maybe by the time I post this we will know about other planets with other life but for now none of that is proven and we should treat spaceship earth as if it is very precious because even if there were other planets with other life out there spaceship earth is very rare and very precious so i hope you become a deep ecologist or at least become deep ecology adjacent as i identify and start to build this movement and build more people who think this way it is not without flaws you know there are concerns of eurocentricism or um the misanthropy concept, but I think if indigenous people and a more diverse group of people were to tie in deep ecology and other political and philosophical concepts like it with movements like the Land Back movement, maybe we would start to see a new um, uprising of this kind of ideology that can help to address our very vast and systemic ecological problems around the globe. Thank you so much for listening. I feel like this is one of the most important videos <laughs> that I've posted. I, you know, I don't know the algorithm, like who likes what, but if there is something that I can share with people that is one of the most important things I have to say in my life, it is how important our ecosystems are. And the fact that we are very out of practice as a society with considering our ecosystems as just as important, if not more important than our individual human you know, desires or manifestations. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in about a week or so.